Dan Kidd has been hopping around the internet, running his mouth, talking about how he's going to beat John Campia, about how he thinks he's the guy to take down the man. I see this, and I hear like a, it's like a small dog, like a Pomeranian. This ain't movie fights. This is the schmodown. And what does that mean? That means when you don't know the difference between Ed 209 and Deep Space 2099, when you think Woody Allen is that adorable little cowboy from Toy Story, your buddy the judge, Andy Signaliori, isn't gonna be there to jump on the stage and save your ass. Get it back. I can't believe oh you're God. undefeated again. Undefeated, oh, Champions do their talk in the ring. And if you don't believe me, you can ask anybody who's ever beaten me when there's a title on the line. Except you can't, because nobody's ever beaten you when there's a title on the line. Don't you worry, Dan. You're going to get to keep that little belt of yours. As a matter of fact, I even want you to bring it along. I'll see you in the ring. Dan Merle is like any of the, uh, these other little sourpuss monkey faces sitting around here. But I'm still the champ. You're still a chump. I don't care if it's that monkey, Mark Riley, saying, oh, I'm the king of schmoes. Campy's trash talk is just that. It's just talk. I think there'd have to be some kind of a threat for it to actually annoy me. You got Dan Merle, I'm the king of screen junkies. John Campia, you can talk the talk all day long, but it's time to walk the walk, buddy. I am the best there is, the best there was, and the best there's ever going to be. And for the rest of those nonchalant little wannabes floating around here wanting a shot at the schmoes title, Get in line, get on your knees, kiss this ring, and maybe, maybe, I'll let you just forfeit your matches so your mothers don't have to cry at home watching you humiliate the family name. That's what I think of Dan Merle. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the debut of the movie trivia schmodown. I'm Christian Harloff. I am Mark Ellison. Christian, this is why you go to the movies. Not to see a great performance or get wrapped up in a story. It's so you can prove to your friends that you know the most about movies on an internet game show. This is a movie trivia battle. We take the heavyweights from the movie space, people that you know, and we put them back just head to head going at it, Mark. This is a battle today. And you talk about head to head. You have John Campia. What's his nickname? John La Cosa Nostra. It's just Campia. scary to hear versus Dangerous Dan Merle from Screen Junkies. And you know, Christian, before we get into who we think might win, yeah. the fans are divided on this on social media, and it seems like they could not pick somebody that they thought would be the favorite. Oh man, I, when we posted this out, as far as who they thought would win, it was divided because you know Campia has his legions of fans. Dan, the reigning and the reigning movie fights champion, he, has his fans. It. I mean, look, there has been so much smack talk between these two. This is something that just just from their skill set is something to watch. But it, then you see the things that they're saying about one another. Whew. If they were kids in a ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese, this would have been broken up by parents ages ago. Not only have they been sending tweets back and forth, Facebook messages, Instagram pictures, and videos. They did full videos where they were talking smack to each other. Who's next? This is what we wanted when we started the movie trivia schmodown. It sure is. And look, and I think that John Campia has no problem with playing the heel role. He is going out there. He has made it very clear that his goal is to get that championship belt. That's what he wants to do. That's when, when we knew that we were going to do this show. He wants the title. And this match, this is the road to the title. You got... Campia versus Merle. Then Roca will play Mance, and then the winner of that, those four people, will eventually get to that title. Oh man, the title shot. Mark Riley standing on the top of the mountain right now. Will it be Campia in line to possibly face him one day, or will it be Dan Merle, a young Patrick Stewart, in my opinion? So, who do you have, Mark? We got these two heavyweights. I am so torn. I go back and forth. One day I got Campia, one day I got Merle. Who do you got in this match? Well, I like both of these gentlemen equally. They've been very nice to me in my career, but Campia has given me more spots on his show, so I'm going to have to say that John Campia is the slim favorite in the book of Ellis, which nobody's ever read. And like I said, I'm going back and forth on this. Um, my pick on this one, I got Merle. I got Merle, and I'll tell you why. Because I've been on the show with Campia many, many times. 
John Campia knows his stuff. Mm-hmm. The problem is, I think that Dan's recall is a little better. His re- his total recall, I, if you I will. I think that the name recognition, I think when you watch Dan Merle on movie fights, the guy just picks up stuff quick. But you never know. Campia, under the lights, the pressure, showed up when it was determined. Him and Tiffany Smith, he single-handedly got them all the way to that final round. That's right. I mean, it's not just determined by how much they know about trivia. Sometimes it's the luck of the draw, Christian. Once you get into rounds two and rounds three, maybe it's the spin of a wheel, the pick of a number. Any little feather that lands could affect the outcome. It's like the butterfly effect or right. like that the one that floats in Forrest Gump. Right, without Ashton Kutcher. Now, we are going to make sure that you guys know know who and why they're going after this title because Dan Dan's also on a mission he wants to unify the titles he wants to have the screen junkies movie fights championship he wants that schmodown championship but in order to do that they got to go through somebody that's right like a woman shopping at target he wants the other belt the belt that currently belongs to Mark Riley Yodi Yodi Mark Yodi Riley let's bring in the champion here he's going to give us his insight here he is Mark wow. Yodi Riley look at, that there, belt. look at that belt so shiny Riley now we know that these are two heavyweights going up this is a main event. Give us your thoughts on Merle and Campia and what you think is going to go down. Oh, guys, this is a tough one. On one hand, you got Merle, the reigning champion movie fight. Smart guy. He's been under pressure. He's been under the lights. But then you got Campia. He's he's clutch in a tight spot. He's been hosting a number of years. He knows his stuff. It's really going to come down to can you handle the pressure? Can you look up at those lights, look right out at that camera, and know your stuff. So I think it's going to come down right to the last question. Who do you got? That's a tough one. Uh, I might have to give a slight edge to Merle because of him winning the belt, but I'm not counting out Campia, so that's really not putting one over the other. But if I have to do it, Merle. It is so nice to be in the presence of greatness. And apparently, Christian, being good at movie trivia is no indicator as to how good you are at shaving your face. Let's see what everybody on social media has been saying about this huge, epic matchup this week. We turn it over to Ashley Mova. What's going on? Thanks, guys. Twitter has crashed with all of your tweets, and the fans seem pretty divided. We're going to start off with the first tweet, and that comes from James Meller writes, Hashtag Schmodown, pride cometh before a fall. At John Campia wrote Pride, so my prediction is Merle Dan for the win. Burn. Katie Williams writes, my money's on John Campia. Campia versus Merle, hashtag schmodown. Jonathan Youngblood got heated and had to take a screenshot of his tweet because it was too long for 140 characters. And he wrote, Nick Mundy, Spencer Gilbert, Andy Senor, Chris Stuckman, Scott Mance, Gray Drake. These are just a few of the fighters destroyed by Dan Merle week after week on movie fights. Against the behemoth that is Dan Merle, John Campia will be left dead on the floor of the ring. No one can stand up against the power of the madman. Christian, Mark, Dennis, and Schnepp won't be around to cover for Campia as he fumbles for words and stammers his way through answers when the showdown debuts on March 25th. Prepare yourself to be fact check Campia. This next tweet comes from Scotty Russell and he writes, at John Campia will crush Dan. He's going to stomp a mud hole in Dan Merle and walk it dry. Campia, the Campia era has begun. Gentlemen, we've been waiting for this match for a long time. The buildup is huge. It's finally here. Back to you, gentlemen. All right, like we said, split. Fans are divided, really looking forward to this match. It is like a pay-per-view heavyweight boxing match. Mark, I think it's time for the tale. Let's go to the tale of the tape. Look at these guys. You got Merle, you got Campia. Campia participating in the house that he helped build. (laughs) This is gonna be something huge. The reigning movie fights champion. My God, the intensity is starting. I certainly feel it, Mark. Let's meet our competitors, Christian. The underdog barely in this matchup by the flip of a coin was dangerous Dan Merle. Come on out, Dan, and show the kids what's going up against Mr. John Campia. All right, here he comes. There's Dan. Look at Dan Merle sunglasses. coming out confident with the sunglasses. With the belt. He brought the belt. He brought the belt. The movie fights belt. little respect there, too. He doesn't really acknowledge. doesn't need to acknowledge the, the camera. He just sits down. He's right over to his chair, Christian. He, he is displaying the championship that he rightfully. This guy has been the movie fights champion for well over a year. That belt that, looks just as heavy as the one that Mark Riley just had. I will tell you, that's going to be a clash of titans if he gets past Campion. Now, look. 
Dan Merle has gone up against some really big heavyweights in the world of movie fights. You and I would sweat a little bit, but Dan Merle has taken him out one by one. Oh, Christian, I sweat rolling out of bed in the morning. You know, the thing about Dan and the thing that Riley brought up is that once you get under the bright lights, how do you perform? Merle has proven he can handle the pressure. If that's how he's going to do in this matchup, then Dan Merle earned his nickname, Being Dangerous. Well, he's got an opponent that's going to give him some problems. No, Mark. here he comes. John Lacosa Nostra Campia making his way there he is. into the Oh, arena. look at the evil. Look at it. I like it. Wow. Campia, look at Campia milking it. Very acting Campia, teacher like. Oh, oh Campia. Now, who's bat. that? Too? Campia not even acknowledging. Whoa. Not even acknowledging Merle. Not even looking at him. Just looking straight over here. These two, just a lot of smack talk. Not even, not, there wasn't a handshake. There was nothing. These guys are ready to go. Christian, do you feel like this is like a table at the Mercenary Bar in Deadpool or maybe a room at the Continental in John Wick? These guys have action movie chops. They are ready to beat the crap out of each other. All right, so let's get started, Mark. I'm ready to announce them. I want to hear the golden throat of one Christian George Harloff. The floor is yours. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the movie Trivia Schmodown. Introducing first, he is the reigning movie fights champion, making his debut in the movie Trivia Schmodown. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, Dangerous Dan Merle! His opponent, competing in the house that he helped build. Ladies and gentlemen, making his debut in the singles movie trivia, please welcome John La Cosa Nostra! Campia! Unbelievable here. I am super excited. I can still hear out of my left ear. That was a hell of an introduction by you, Christian. Thank you, thank and you. I think that was the great opening salvo for our premiere episode. Are you ready to go? I am so ready to go. I cannot wait. I think they're ready to go. We got to ask them. John Campia, are you ready to compete? I am ready to compete. Dangerous Dan, are you ready to compete? I'm ready, but I have to make sure I can see you. All right. Uh, can I can I ask a question before we get you going? You can do whatever. It's our show. Do whatever the I hell you want. I got to ask for the fans here, John. A lot of smack talk going on in this match leading up to it, too. You have you've said some things about the movie fights title. You said them some things about Dan. You're sitting next to each other. What do you have to say going into this battle with the man sitting next to you right there? I think you two monkeys have talked enough, and we need to get to asking some questions. Oh, he's, he's turning down. He's tuning down. Dan, do you have any response to any of the comments that John has been making over the week? I've said it from the beginning. I do my talking in the ring, and time to talk is over. All right, Let's do this. there you go. Let me point out, Christian, monkeys yeah. are one of the smartest life forms it's on true. planet Earth. That's true. You Just want to say that. Thanks for the gene. You see Dawn on the planet of the apes. Uh, so, John, you are the favorite by the toss of a coin, by the skin of your cheek. That's not a phrase. Do you want to go first, or would you rather have Dan answer his half of questions first? I will defer. He's going to defer. So that means Dangerous Dan Merle is going to be the first one to go. Yeah. Dan, I will be asking you the questions. Christian, you'll be asking John Campy the questions. And I want to give everybody at home a quick rundown of the rules for round one. In round one, each competitor will be answering six questions from a variety of categories. Each question is worth one point. There is no stealing. There is no penalty for an incorrect answer. Thus, Christian, you can get a maximum of six points. Dan, choose from category one or category two. Category two. He's going category two. Dan, your first category is animated movies. Mm, okay. Who provided the voice of Edna Mode in The Incredibles? Oh, boy, that's tough. That's what we like to hear on the movie trivia Schmodown. Edna Mode. I haven't I've seen The Incredibles a few times. She's a great character. Five. But I don't know. I don't know the, I don't know the voice. Shot in the dark, two. One. Judy Dench. Oh, we were looking for Brad Bird, Bird. the director Brad Bird. of the movie. The it seems like John can't be John yeah. right. I have a feeling the only question he's going to know today continues. are the ones that are directed at you. That's right. <laughs> wow. We move on to movie quotes. Finish this movie quote. I can't believe I gave my panties to a blank. I can't believe I gave, I gave my, my panties, panties to, to a blank. A geek. He got it right. The movie is 16 Candles. It is geek. That is the same thing that Christian said to me not three years ago. <laughs> Moving on to the action adventure category. In action adventure, who played Blaine in Predator? Blaine? Blaine in Predator. Oh, man. The movie, it turns out, is about an Carl alien. Carl Weathers was not Blaine. 
Arnold Who Schwarzenegger was not playing in Predator. Five. Jesse Ventura. He got the future governor wow. of Minnesota, I believe it was. That, that is actually a thing that happened. Dan Merle with a big two points, and that is where John Campy will come in. Now, John, in the category of animated, who directed the animated best feature film, Inside Out? Andrew Stanton. The answer is Pete <laughs> Doctor. Doctor, Doctor. Give All me right. the news. Movie quotes. Name the movie from the quote. Throw that shit again, meat. Throw that weak ass shit again. Five, four, three, two. Revenge of the Nerds. The answer is Bull Durham. Oh. Bull Durham. You have a very calming countdown voice. Thank That's you. a compliment. Thank you. In the category of action adventure. What was the first film in which The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, played the lead? The Rundown. You're looking for The Scorpion King. Oh, of course. Oh, Scorpion uh, King. He played, that was that was a follow up to The Mummy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, right. So we have, we to have the mummy two, two Mummy zero. Returns, right? Two yeah. zero, Wait, Dan Merle there. is in the lead. Okay. okay, Dan, you are back on with comic book films. Okay. In Men in Black, what does the tiny alien say is on Orion's belt? Uh, the galaxy. Give Dan Merle another point. He's up three nothing all of a sudden. And now we move on to horror. What fatal event do the survivors narrowly escape at the beginning of Final Destination? Uh, plane explosion. That is very, very good. It's almost exactly the way we typed it. He gets another point. <laughs> he is up to four points. Unbelievable. Going for a big five Looking here with nice. his last category of round one, romantic comedies. Aside from Winona Ryder and Ethan Hawke, name one other main actor or the director of Reality Bites. Cameron Crowe. <laughs> That is not correct. We would have accepted Janine Garofalo, right. Ben Stiller, who also directed, or Steve Zahn, a guy who should be getting more work. He is very, very I funny. It, he did singles. Right. Wow, okay, there we go. Look at that. that. So that was a big I miss by Dan. I thought he nice. would get that. All right, now in the category of comic book movie, John, who plays the villain in the first Blade film? I was just looking at a picture of me and him. He just he does the e-cig commercials now. Uh, he was looking at a five, picture of him. Four, three, Stephen, two, one. Flint. The answer was Stephen Dorf. Dorf. Mm. Stephen Dorf. Wow, mm. Campy, I had it. Campy, I had it, and it just slipped away. E-cigs just as bad as wow. regular cigarettes. All kids. right, in the category of horror, what is the name of the sequel to the Blair Witch Project? Eduardo Sanchez did not direct the second one. The recall problem. He's got to get on the board with this, Christian. Five, four, three. The Blair Witch Prophecy. The answer is the Blair Witch Book of Shadows. Sorry, Book uh, of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. All right, your final category, rom-coms. Who played the title role in the original Sabrina? Five, four, three, two, one. The answer is Audrey Hepburn. Wow, so the score at this moment is four nothing. Ooh. Five. What's that? Isn't it five? Uh, I missed two. Oh, okay. I missed yeah. two. John Campion, not good at trivia or math <laughs> here in the early going. Four nothing. The movie fights champion Dan Merle right now is dangerous indeed. Oh my gosh. Going into the second round. The guy is a menace. And now as we go into round two, we're going to have our lovely assistant, the Vanna White of this show, Josh McCuga, is going to grab the wheel that you gentlemen will spin. That will determine your category for round two. Now we want to remind everybody at home, if they spin it once, they don't love the category they got. They have what you call in golf a mulligan where you can go again. But if you get the same category again, that's the category you are stuck with. In round two, you will get four 
four questions each based on that category. They are worth two points apiece. However, you can go to multiple choice, in which case the value of the question goes down to one point. There is stealing allowed in this round. So, Christian, a comeback can be made very, very quickly. It's going to be interesting. All right, Dan, so you are up first. Okay. Would you like to go first? Would you like John to go first? Um, I, I'll defer. You'll defer. I'll okay. defer. John, give it a spin, please. you got to give it a kind of a big spin there. All right, there we go. Big yeah. muscles on John. Yeah, yeah. Looks like Land, he got pumped up for this. On. Ooh, biopic. Biopic. I'm going to take a respin on that. Go ahead. This is it. And it's going to land on biopic again. John. Not a fan of real life. No, nope. John can't be. All right. Oh. Coming of age. Ooh. Coming of age films for John Campion. Coming so of age movies. They bring a tear you. to your eye. They remind you of high school. It is a beautiful thing indeed. John, your first question in coming of age. In the film Dazed and Confused, which president is said to have grown marijuana on his plantation? Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> We cannot accept that. That is incorrect. And now Dangerous Dan Merle can steal. Two points. I believe it was George Washington. Two points right off oh. the bat. And it's not even his category. Dan wow. Merle running away with this competition. All right. Number two. Number two, John. In Mean Girls, what breakfast food did Gretchen Wiener's father invent? Keep in mind, you can go to multiple choice if you so desire. What breakfast food did Gretchen Wiener's father invent? I'm going to have to go to multiple choice on that. Is it A, Pop-Tarts, B, Toaster Strudels, C, Eggo Waffles, or D, The Breakfast Bowl? Right. Go Toaster Strudels. The drought is finally He's on the over. board. He's on the board. <laughs> he gets one point. one point, and maybe that's the spark that he needed to fire up this resistance. Could be. He needs this. John, your next question. What famous baseball player signed the ball that went over the fence in the sandlot? He is from Canada, Christian. This yes. might trip Not him up. Not a big baseball guy. It's if it was hockey, we'd be in good shape. America's pastime. Five, four. I have to say it's Babe Ruth. Give Whoa, him two points! Two points. Whoa. Look at that. He didn't go with multiple choice and just guessed it and got it. The Canadian Christian in hockey that terms, that's what is called a slap shot from way downtown. Six to three now. <laughs> and the last question in round two for John Campia. What Lord of the Rings star made his film debut in The Goonies? I just want to make sure I get the pronunciation. It's uh, Sean Austin. Give him two more points, and John Campy is right back in wow, this match okay. with a big five points Th in round two. And you were absolutely right. That toaster strudel turned him around. So, Christian, at the end of John Campia's round two, he has climbed back to almost neck to neck with Dan Merle. Dan Merle's got him six to five. It is unbelievable here. That toaster strudel really got him out of a stinker. <laughs> All right, Dan, you are up. Spin the wheel. Okay. Have you ever had a toaster strudel? No. You put the good? frosting on yourself mm -hmm. as opposed to the Pop Tarts, which are oh. pre frosted. What do you got? Crime. Crime. Is it mm. Mm. Bird in the hand, you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a if, if I get Polly Shore, I'm gonna be very upset, but I'm gonna take a, <laughs> I'm gonna take a chance here and do a respin. Right. He's risking Polly wow. Shore, Christian. Hey, nice. He's getting rid of crime. Why? He's gonna land on Polly Shore. Nope, there goes Polly Shore. Fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi. That's a big that is a big category. category. It looks like it might pay off. Unbelievable. That's right. So in the in the category of fantasy sci-fi, Christian will be asking you the uh, the questions, Dan. Mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. Dan, in what city does minority report take place? It's a futuristic city. The future is not a city. <laughs> I think I might know it, but I'll go to multiple choice. Is it A, Washington, D.C., B, New York, C, Philadelphia, D, Boston? should have remembered it at the end. It's D.C. That is correct. One yes. point. One point for Dan. When you okay. said D.C., I remembered the end of the movie. All right. In the Lord of the Rings trilogy, who plays... Galadriel, Queen of the Elves. I don't know if I spelled that. Is Nailed that, that right? pronunciation. Is that right? Galadriel. 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 Uh, he knows. Oh, let me ask again. Yep. In the Lord of the Rings trilogy, who plays Galadriel, Queen of the Elves? Uh, Kate Blanchett. Two points for Dan. Wow, he knew that one right off he the did. bat. I don't know how to pronounce any of those Lord of the Rings names. Dan, 
Name the female lead in the 2008 movie Hancock. Uh, that was, I'll make sure I don't get it wrong. That's a key to this game. <laughs> uh, Charlize Theron. Correct. <laughs> Another two points for Dan. What science fiction action flick features crab-like creatures called facehuggers? Oh, uh, Alien. Facehuggers are in Alien. Yeah, that is correct. We, we have, can accept, we can alien. accept that. We, we can alien, accept alien, alien or aliens. We would take it either. Okay. So that's so, a big seven points in round two, Christian. So now the score, if I'm not mistaken, is 13 to five. John Campia has an outside shot, but he's got to come to play in round three. This is a big, big round for Campia. Woo. All right, Mark, why don't you explain how round three works? How round three works is that each competitor is going to give us three numbers at random from one to 24. Those will determine the three categories that they have to answer question in each in round three. Their first question is worth one point. Their second question is worth three points. Their final question is worth five big points. Points. Christian, why don't you get the numbers from these lovely gentlemen? Dan, you are again in the lead going into the third round. Would mm -hmm. you like to pick first, or would you like John to pick first? Uh, I'll I I will I'll pick first. Okay, three numbers between one to twenty-one. Is that what uh, one to twenty-one is. I said twenty-four, but I was lying. Uh, I'll take eleven, nineteen, and four. Eleven, nineteen. And four. I like how he doubled back to four like. after going up to 11 yes. and 19. 11, 19, and four. Okay. John, pick three numbers, please. One, two, and three. One, <laughs> wow. two, and three. All right. I like that strategy. Okay. It could pay it's off. Right. It could pay off. All right. We are going to start with John Campion. We are going to start with John Campia. Christian, you will be administering the questions to Mr. Campia. John, your, your question for your one-pointer from 90s movies. 90s movies for one point. Who played the titular character in Maverick? 1994. Oh, in the 90 version, Mel Gibson. Correct, one point for John Cannon. Whew, that is big, you need to get off to a good start there, Christian. Yes, okay, number two. This is gonna be classics. For your three-pointer, the category is classics. What? Who played the title role in the 1963 version of Cleopatra? Three points. He needs this tray, He'll Christian. Lose if he misses this. He does not right? get this answer right. He will lose. I'm not putting any pressure on him, but if he misses this, he loses. He will lose. Dan Merle will win. It's Elizabeth... And I'm blanking on the last name. It's Elizabeth Zit. Look at this. We're going to have five, to start the five count. Four. Just got to guess. Three, two, one. Nothing. I was going to say Banks. But <laughs> Elizabeth Taylor and the winner. Taylor. Dangerous Dan Merle. Mathematically eliminates John Campia. Christian, you know, it's not going to wow. be scored as a knockout, but Dan no. Merle, start to finish, really proved his worth. But for John Campia's credit, he did not go down easy. He made a great comeback in round two, based largely on the strength of Toaster Strudel. That Strudel was <laughs> a this big This is hit. the right way to kick off the movie trivia showdown. I think John avoided that knockout by really, it was just, I think he knew a lot of the answers. He knew Steven Dorff. He knew it. It was just the fact, I think the lights got to him. I think last names tripped John up. Maybe yeah. they don't use last names in Canada. We're going to have to do our research to see if they even use them up there. Maybe it's just John and Steve everywhere. Well, we are going to have Josh McCuga talk to both John Campia and Dan Merle right now. Josh, take it away. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Christian. I'm here right now, the inaugural episode of the Movie Trivia Showdown with today's winner, Diamond Dan, Dangerous. Dan Merle, congratulations, man. Oh, thank you. Well done, sir. Uh, tell me how you feel right now. Because there was a lot of smack talk. There was a lot of smack talk. I feel relieved. I, you know, there's a lot of talk before these things, but I knew that Campy was going to be a tough opponent, and he proved to be. I, you know, I mean, he, it went to the final round. Even if I didn't have to answer any questions, I knew that he wasn't going to be a, 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 a total KO. Uh, so, uh, you know, right now, it's my eyes turn to uh, my next match. Now, let me ask you a question. You go up 4 nothing after the first round. What's this, the thought in your head? Because everybody, nobody saw John Campia missing every question in the first round. 
Well, you know, a lot of people, I think, would have gotten a little overconfident. But again, I know John. I know that he knows his movies. And you never know what these two gentlemen on the other side are going to ask you. I could have hit four bad questions myself, and then I'd be looking at the other end of uh, of being, uh, you know, in the trailing. So uh, just got to you got to play to win. So uh, let's go to the second round. You spun once. You hit crime. Mm-hmm. And, and there's a lot of categories on that wheel that can, can really trip you up. What, what were you thinking? Because the crime you could have stayed on, what were you thinking about that second spin? That was a calculated risk. There were a lot of the crime was one of those that was right in the middle for me. Who knows what that could be? I, that was a real X factor. It was a gamble on my part. Luckily, I hit sci-fi, which is something I'm, I'm pretty pretty strong on, but I just as easily could have hit Polly Shore or Julia Roberts or something like that, and then I might have you might have been talking to uh, Campia right now instead of me. True, true. So, okay, we're going to move on. We're going to go, and we have you're going to face the winner of John Roca and Scott Mance, two formidable opponents. Who do you want? Who, do you wa- who would you like to see? Who are you fearing to see? Maybe a flip-flop there. Well, you know, Movie Mance is uh, an encyclopedia. If there's a if there's a slot on that wheel for what day movies open, uh, I, you can just bounce me right out of this arena because I'm not surviving. But uh, you know, Mance's uh, knowledge is formidable. I would like to like to match up brain to brain with Movie Mance, but I've got some unfinished business with Roca. As you may remember, he uh, knocked uh, myself and Riley out of the uh, the team showdown. So I feel like I've got some some revenge to take care of. So. I don't know. I, I, I'd like to try to take care of business against Roca, but I love Mance, too. John Roca, uh, a lot of words. I'm sure there will be a lot of smack talk before that match if John Roca does, in fact, win. Last question for you. If you were a movie, how would you describe yourself in a movie on today's performance? Uh, just like the name of a movie? Yeah, the name mm. of a movie. Is there a movie you called Inevitable? <laughs> No, we just created it. What would it mean for you to bring back the Collider Schmodown belt to Defy, two screen junkies? Yeah. You know, I know there's a lot of people over there at Screen Junkies that want that belt. They want to see it. What, what, what are you thinking there? Well, it would mean a lot. I mean, you know, on movie fights, uh, even though I'm always competing for myself, I always feel like I'm also fighting to protect our home turf. I mean, the, the, the movie fight's belt is, is belongs to Screen Junkies more than it belongs to me. So to come on to somebody else's turf to play an away game and win a championship, that would be uh, that would be pretty amazing. But there's a lot of a lot of bumps in the road before I get there. He speaks big words. He's got big goals. Dangerous Dan Merle. Follow him on Twitter at Merle Dan and see him on Screen Junkies Movie Fights. Dan, good luck, man. Thank you, sir. All right. Hi, Collider Schmodown movie trivia fans. I am here with uh, the first episode of the Schmodowns. Unfortunate loser, Mr. John Campia. Uh, John. It was a tough match. Uh, first round, obviously, did you in a little bit. Uh, what are your feelings right now? What, what's going through your head? Well, there, there are four things that sunk me, this one. The first round wasn't actually it. I mean, it was, it was three points between us in the first round. That's not really a big thing. But the four things that really did me in, uh, number one, uh, missing Taylor and Dorf when I knew who they were. You know, mm-hmm. that, that hurt. The, the, one of the big turning points in the match, though, was, uh, was the, uh, the question that Dan got regarding... Um, minority report right because the moment they read the question i knew the answer was washington and i was sitting there willing him to take a shot in the dark (laughs) and guess because i knew he didn't know what it was and that was a two point that was a four point swing right there but you know full credit to him he he did the right thing he did the smart thing he went to uh he went to multiple choice he heard dc which triggered his his memory and he he pulled it off so that was good the uh, one the the third big turning point was when he Dan made the right decision, he hit crime as a thing, and he decided to spin again, and it landed on sci-fi fantasy. That so, was that was a big spin. Softball, but but I mean he made that 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 he got that softball because he made the right choice. Mm-hmm. You know he knew he wasn't going to do well in crime. He made the decision to make the spin again, take the risk, getting something like Paulie Shore. That was great. The fourth one was my nightmare coming into the match, and that was knowing everything he gets asked. Not knowing what I get asked. And I didn't know. He, he got the one wrong on Days and Confused. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that one either, actually. That, but that was the one question he got that I didn't know. And uh, I was really waiting for, hoping he would stumble. I'd hear the questions like, please stumble. So those are the four. But there's a fifth bonus reason. And that's that Dan just, he knew his stuff. And all you can do is answer the questions that are put in front of you. And Dan got answered questions put in front of him. He answered them. And he ended up taking it. And what, what people, you know, when you're watching the Schmodown, you think it's all knowledge. But there is, like you, you mentioned, there's a lot of strategy that goes in, that, that's really involved in this game. Uh, spinning the wheel, going multiple choice. He seemed to play his cards right. Uh, playing your cards right, what do you, what's next going forward? What, who do you want to see? Cause now now you're, you're here. You've got to climb back up to get back into that contention. Who do you want? What do you want to do? 
Uh, well, I, I was telling people before the match began that win or lose, this was my final match. This was my retirement match. Really? I was telling people that before before the show started. So this 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 far as I'm going to go. But uh, I really I'm dying, 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 dying. I cannot wait to watch that Roca Mance uh, match. I think that's going to be great. Uh, I think Levine's going to end up walking away with this title. I think he's going to end up with this title at the end of the day. I'm looking forward to seeing Dan go further. Uh, but uh, I think at the end of the day, Levine's going to probably end up with this belt around his shoulder. You guys, you're hearing right here first, this is it for John Campia. Now, listen, Brett Favre retired, okay? He came <laughs> back and played for two other teams. Is there a Minnesota Vikings in my future? Is that, is that what you're asking? There could be a, a run to the NFC Championship game. Guys, it may be over. It may not be. Uh, listen, John Campia... Uh, I, I want to ask you, I like to ask this question. If you were a movie, what would you compare your performance to today? Uh, I would probably compare my performance today to, I'm going to say, Avengers Age of Ultron. Pretty good, didn't fulfill on his potential, though. So I'll, I'll go there. Guys, John Campia, you can follow him on Twitter, at John Campia. Uh, John, Congratulations. I know, I know you said it's retirement, but we hope we see you again. Back to Christian and Mark in the studio. Schmodown. Thank you, Josh. And we're joined now by the Schmodown champion, Mark Riley. He's the current belt holder, but my God, the movie fights champion, Dan Merle, proved his worth against John Campia. Mark Riley, where do you see Dan Merle's future going in this show? Oh, he's going to go very, very far. You can see that he's prepped, that he's done this before. The lights do not get to him. He is a reason. There's a reason why he's the movie fights champion. I can see uh, Merle actually going to the finals, maybe taking me on. Well, you know, obviously, no, there's no finals in regards to tournament this year because you guys have been in a tournament together. You guys were teammates at one point. Now, the question is, Dan Merle will now go up against the winner of Scott Mance and John Roca. Who do you have in both of those, whether it's Scott Mance versus Roca and then Dan Merle versus either one of those gentlemen? Well, I've taken, uh, I've, I've taken on Roca, and i got to say, he is tough. He is strong. I'm going to go with Roca taking it from Mance, and then between Merle and Roca, i got to go with Merle. He's got the experience. Ooh, That's now, the a interesting, whole lot of smack talk going It on. is. Now, the interesting thing there, though, is that if, if, this is all if, there's a possibility you could play Dan Merle. However, you've got a match that's going to happen at the end of April that you're defending that title against the mispronunciating terror, J-T-E. A um, little bit on that, on that match. Uh, JT is a fine specimen. He, uh, he understands the human language beyond any other person out there in the space. Uh, he, but his knowledge, I might make fun of the guy, his knowledge is pretty tough. So I'm going to have to do some studying, but uh, I'm not too worried. All right, the champion, Mark Riley, thank you, sir, for joining us once again. Make sure you're going to watch that match. But, man, this was something. Dan Murrow really showed what he's all about tonight. That's right. Riley better polish his belt while he still has it because there's going to be a lot of contenders wanting to grab that thing. It was such a great way to kick off the movie trivia schmoed on having John Campia come in here, having Dan Murrow. It was an awesome matchup to watch. I can't wait to see where the rest of this series goes. And next week, you're going to see who Dan is going to eventually play because you have the outlaw, John Roca, going up against the Mance man, Scott Mance, who do you guys think will win? Who do you think Dan will wind up playing? And will Dan get a shot at the title? What do you think? Comment. Let us know what you think of the match. And always hashtag Schmodown. And let us know what you're looking forward to see. Thank you guys for tuning in. That is Christian Harloff. I am Mark Ellis. And you can always catch us here on Collider Video on YouTube. Subscribe to this channel and never miss another movie trivia Schmodown. We'll see you next week. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.